On this episode, we're going to be talking about believing in yourself and finding love and hope in your life. Welcome to Thriving Launch with Louise Congdon and Kamala Chambers, the show for heart-centered entrepreneurs who want it all. Five days a week, we bring you different segments to inspire you to live a life of freedom. We interview the leading experts in the field of business, health, and love. Be sure to check out Training Tuesdays, where we give you a clear action plan to grow your own business. Do you have a product or service that you would like to sell online? Or maybe you've been thinking about it, but you're reserved to do it because you need a website, you need complicated systems, and you need to spend money. Well, I've created a completely free course that teaches you how to use Facebook in a purely organic way. This means no ads and no money are needed. You can use Facebook completely free. So head on over to thrivinglaunch.com. Opt into my Profit from Social Media course. I'm going to teach you the free methods to using Facebook to make money today. Today's guest comes from India, from a very small village, from illness, sickness, and having a lot of disadvantages and a lot of rights taken away from her, she still figured out a way to live her dreams and has gone on to be the very first Les Brown certified coach, speaker, and trainer in India, the first representative for Les Brown over there in India, chosen out of thousands of people she made it through. She's also somebody who's created several booming businesses in India, and we are really excited to welcome Shraddha on to today's Thriving Launch podcast episode. And this episode is special for me as well because we've been trying to put an extra focus on women and women who are really doing amazing things. And Shraddha is somebody that we're excited to bring to you and someone who has an incredible story coming from rags to riches. We are so excited to have you on the show. Are you ready to launch into it? Yes, I am, Kamla. Thank you. Well, it's it's really a blessing to have you here. And your message is so much about love and hope. I'd love to hear what that means to you, how we can find more love and hope in our lives. Well, it all begins about believing in yourself. Just about two years ago, I was completely lost. More than 25 kgs overweight, severe backache, swelling in my feet. I couldn't take a step after a, you know, a drive of say one and a half hours in the car. When we, when I would get off, I just couldn't take a step further because there was no circulation of blood on my feet. And it was terrible. When I went for a whole body checkup, I was um, handed over a whole file of prescriptions, which I held in one hand when I came back. And my eyes drifted to a book that was lying on the shelf called The Power of Intention by Dr. Wayne Dyer. I lifted that book and it spoke of, you know, a a quote from that book that whenever my mind drifts away from that which is good and constructive, I would like to bring it back to that which is lovely and of good report. And trust me, today what I am is without a single pill. Such a beautiful journey that to be able to go all the way through that and get to a place of healing and even feeling good in your body again. How does that all tie in to believing in yourself? When I began to read, I picked up books on uh, from Jim Rohn uh, and uh, Tony Robbins. And then one fine day, I came across an anecdote by Mr. Les Brown. When I read that anecdote, even as I speak with you, I'm getting goose pimples. Every word of his on that anecdote resonated with my being. I felt as if he wrote that passage for me. As if he was telling me, don't give up, don't give up. And life is hard and it happens. But what really matters is what happens within you. And when things go bad, don't go with them. So when all of these things came across to me day after day, like I started following him on Facebook and I started jotting down all his anecdotes into my journal. From there, The Les Brown Maximum Achievement team contacted me and invited me to join them as their first founding member from India. At 4 a.m. in the morning, I received the call, you won't believe in my sleep. In my sleep, I was talking to them. And actually, you know, 
I didn't want to cut my own laws of attraction. So I believed every word that they said and thanked God for this opportunity. And today I really thank myself that I did believe in that moment because it has taken me you know, to where I am today. Out of the 140 members who were chosen as founding members, only 20 were selected to go live with less on stage. And India was one of them. Now being born in a village in Bihar, one of the states of India, which is, you know, a 20 kilometers away from a city even today, and reaching uh, the US and giving a speech there live with Les Brown on stage, the universe couldn't have, you know, blessed me with anything more than, you know, actually go on believing in myself. And yes, it, I, only I can make it happen for me. Nobody else is going to do it for me. It's really cool to hear how, how your story evolved from finding a book by Dr. Wayne Dyer and your body is in massive amounts of pain. It sounds like you were very sick and um, you didn't really love yourself very much at that time to reading some passages and being inspired to turn that around. What was your process? Because some of the things that you've said really makes it clear to me that you went through a process of changing how you talk to yourself, changing your energy around how much you, you care about yourself or how much you believe in possibilities. Can you tell me a little bit about that process? Because I know that you're, you know, today you're calling in from India from a very small place uh, and you've gone now to somebody who's recognized online. I actually found you through Facebook. Uh, someone recommended, a variety of people recommended that I reach out to you as part of our female empowerment series of and speaking with entrepreneurs and women who are really making a difference. And it's just very cool to me to talk to somebody who's gone through such a transformation. What did you start changing in yourself to to have this shift happen? The first thing I began to do was to read and write. As a child, when I uh, was born in that village, my parents sacrificed to send me uh, to a boarding school at the age of four. And from there, I, I picked up the fact that education was the most important thing for me to thrive in this world. And uh, because my parents would visit me one day before if I would top my class because they could come for my prize distribution, I really, really focused on studies and reading and, you know, um, seeing my daddy one day before uh, the break. It really meant a lot to me because we couldn't, we had no contact for nine months with our parents, uh, no, I mean, uh, you know, phone call, nothing, no, no internet. There was nothing at all in uh, in the seventies. So, um, uh, the I I do remember love loving to read at that time and writing even then. So the first thing that I did uh, for this transformation, if you ask me, is I began to read and write and do a lot of journaling. So as I would read, I would make notes as I would hear Tony Robbins, Mr. Les Brown and Sir Jim Brown and, you know, Earl Nightingale and all of the people, I would start making notes. And when you write, you feel what you're writing and everything began to, you know, incorporate in my being. And that is how I saw the change in me, because whenever my attention did drift away, you know, it yet came back. The, the span of distraction became shorter, 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 and it kept focusing on what I wanted. I kept moving forward, you know, to what I wanted in life was that I wanted a healthier life. I wanted a happier life. So I forgot about, you know, what had happened with me and from, uh, you know, being bitter, I chose to get better. I just removed the E and uh, the I and I replaced it with the E. And you're right. <laughs> I love that. I would love to hear from you what your message would be to someone who is struggling with believing in themselves. What could they do to have more confidence and start believing in themselves? Life happens. Life happens to everyone. Life happened to me too. I was banned from reading and writing for over 13 years. But when I chose to believe in myself and I wasn't committing any crime. So your heart always speaks the truth. And when you start believing that you're doing something with, you know, a righteous attitude and uh, it's not something that is hurting anybody, 
then the universe uh, tends to, you know, uplift you and raise you from where you actually are at that moment. So what is happening around you doesn't matter. Life is hard. Life happens to everybody. But what happens within you is what matters. So when you get within yourself, when you start becoming mindful, when you start acknowledging yourself for who you are, that is the time when you start believing. Like you can't pour from an empty cup. You need to take care of yourself. You need to fulfill your needs, your desires, not by being selfish, but by preparing to give from your overflow. Give from your overflow. What a beautiful message. Before we close out today, what is one thing that you can say that you'd recommend that we could go out and all apply in our lives today? Bring love and hope into your life and work culture because when you do that, the possibilities are, you can't even begin to imagine what all you can achieve when you bring love and hope into your life and work culture. Thank you so much for tuning in, Thriving Launchers. We've been talking about believing in yourself. I encourage you all to go out and incorporate some of these things that we've been talking about today with bringing more love, more hope, so you can believe in yourself. You've been listening to the Thriving Launch Podcast. For books and resources related to today's episode, make sure to head over to thrivinglaunch.com. We'll see you there. Be sure to tune in to the next episode where you and I are going to sit down together and talk about how to stop feeling overwhelmed, like you have so much to do in your business, and how to start outsourcing. There's so many benefits to outsourcing that we're going to talk about it, and uh, we're really going to dive into how to make it happen for you. Uh, I know it sounds scary for a lot of people, but be sure to tune into that. And if you've enjoyed this episode today, make sure that you're subscribed on iTunes.